Hey guys, this is Steve Good over at the Scroll Saw Workshop. I uh, put together a little project this weekend that I want to show you. Uh, the other day when we were doing the uh, jewelry box and we put the little 3D leaf on top of the box, um, I showed you how to take the uh, block of wood that had the pattern on it and surround it by a couple larger pieces of wood and then to clamp them together. That was a little awkward. I've never liked doing it that way, although I've always done it that way. Um, so I thought I would put together a little jig that was a little more convenient to use, and that's what we have here today that I wanted to show you. Um, basically, what I've done is I've taken two blocks of wood. Um, both of them are an inch and a half thick. I ended up cutting them uh, five inches long. I think I'll make another set and actually go with seven inches to give myself a little more throw here for bigger pieces. Um, the pieces that I used, uh, hardware wise, I purchased at Home Depot so they're real easy to come by. Um, I have two T-nuts. I bought one 24 inch threaded rod uh, with uh, 20 threads per inch. I purchased some washers, a couple of wing nuts, and a couple of cap nuts just to uh, protect your fingers from the end of these rods. Then what I did is I took the T nut, I drilled holes through both blocks of wood, and this uh, in the far block, I ended up drawing or uh, drilling these holes a quarter inch with a quarter inch bit, and on this block I drilled them with uh, two bit sizes larger than the quarter inch because I wanted this one to have a little float to it so we could make sure we got it flat on the table, and also to make it easier to move back and forth. Then what I did was I threaded the uh, two 8 inch threaded rods through the T-nuts on this end and let them protrude about a quarter of an inch or a little less and then I just took epoxy I don't want these pieces to be able to turn inside these T-nuts so I took epoxy and just totally coated the end of the rod the T-nut and let it seep over onto the wood and I did that on both uh, both of them and I think that's going to be strong enough I've used it a little while and it you don't put a lot of pressure on these pieces when you're cutting them anyway so I think this is good enough if this doesn't work uh, the next thing I'll do is go ahead and drill a hole through the rod uh, put another little um, bar through the rod and recess it into the wood and I know that'll hold but anyway right now what I've done is epoxy these and I think that's going to be fine <clears throat> so then you have the two rods sticking out of this piece and they're not going to move you go ahead and put the other half of the clamp on the two rods, take a washer on each rod, a wing nut on each rod, and then the cap washer just to protect your fingers on this end of the rod. <clears throat> now what you have is you have a clamp that you can conveniently clamp around the piece that you're going to cut. So in this case, go ahead and thread your blade through the piece, set your clamp over it, push it together, make sure everything's nice and flat, just spin the wing nuts up, so you can tighten them down. Doesn't take a tremendous amount of pressure, just a you know finger tight right there, and uh, we're pretty much ready to cut. We can go ahead and tension the blade and make this cut. Okay, there's the top of the pattern cut. Go ahead and loosen our wing nuts. Back the clamp off a little bit. Take the tension off, release the blade. Now we can go ahead and turn the piece over to where we're going to do the side profile of the cut. And we're just going to do exactly the same thing. Go ahead and reposition the clamp. Push it back together. Move your wing nuts back up. Retension the blade. And we can cut the side profile.
there's our side profile cut. So I think you can see that's a much easier process than what we did the other day with the clamps. Uh, just not near as uh, convoluted to get it together. A uh, couple other things I did do is you want to make sure that this bottom surface is flat to the table. Uh, so I did mark the top so I could keep the bottom uh, the same all the time. And I did spend a little time flattening the surface after I had it put together. So you might have to do a little bit of that. Once you get the final piece cut, again, you can just loosen the tension on the clamp. Take the piece out and we'll see if we can get our 3D cut out of here. And there is our 3D leaf cut. So I think that's a, a lot better system than what I used the other day. Uh, you're talking four or five dollars to put it together tops. Uh, probably have most of these parts already in your shop anyway. So um, if you're interested in cutting uh, many 3D ornaments and uh, those type of patterns, this might be worth putting together. You might end up actually wanting to make a couple of them, uh, different sizes. Uh, this one would have the ability to cut about four inch uh, block. And like I said, I'm going to move this up to seven inches to get a little more throw there for a little bigger cut. So I'll put the uh, materials list up on the website for you to look at and uh, see if you can give this one a try. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you over at the website, www.scrollsawworkshop.blogspot.com.